Matthew 7, verse 1. We're still in the Sermon on the Mount. Coming near to the end. It's the last chapter for the Sermon on the Mount. Judge not, that ye be not judged. There it is. If you have been in any public ministry, such especially street preaching, you have had somebody angry, somebody come up to you, he judge not, he should be judged. And I hand him the Bible, I say, okay, show me where that is. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. And I only do that because judge not that you judge not that you be not judged. It's like I could do all things who case restraints in me. And I, to which I I apply, I'll go jump off the Empire State Building. I can't do that. Well, evidently that's not what that verse means. And when you go into judge not that you be not judged, you do not quote verse two. It's amazing. One of, the, one of the things you get people that come at you is a message that comes out of the Sermon on the Mount. Written to Jewish people. In a Jewish God, we'll, we'll see in Luke later. Judge not that ye be not judged. In other words, don't preach to us. That's what they're telling you. In other words, what they're saying in the original Hebrew is... Shut up. We don't want to hear it. But we're going to be nice. I've heard people tell me, that's not how my pastor do it. And I say, oh, your pastor's doing it wrong. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. I'm preaching and you don't like it. It's Bible. For with what judgment you judge... Ye shall be judged, colon, and with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. That's the, so, that's the law of sowing and reaping. Verse 1 and 2, they only give you verse 1, is if you judge harshly, that's what you're going to get back. If you're unforgiving spirit, that's what you're going to get back. If you're demanding, that's what you're going to get back. If you're unforgiving, remember we, you know, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, forgive us our trespasses, as thou. So here we go. So when you come up to a street preacher and you, you judge not least he be judged, warning, warning. Verse 2 says, you're going to get judged but what you just judge, because when you come up to me and tell me, judge not least you, you're telling me to shut up. Satan's told you there's one Bible verse. Satan knows the Bible verses. Remember, he's quoting to Jesus out of Psalms, and he forgot one whole verse about him and the Antichrist. So the law of sowing and reaping is judgment is you're going to get what you put in. And when you come to the, why is God so harsh on me? Why are people so quickly judge me? Well, you need to be looking at what you're doing for judgment. And we move on to verse 3. Why beholdest the moat, a little thing, that's in thy brother's eye? But consider not the beam, that's a big thing, that's in thy own eye. So, we got two different things here. We have a moat, which is a toothpick. You have a beam, 
which is about the size of a wooden doll used in construction. And you're going up to somebody, well, let, let me take that little speck. <laughs> Meanwhile, you've got a large thing. They may have one sin that you're looking at. And yeah, it may be a sin. You may have five, six, seven, or more. If you've never read your Bible, don't come up to the street preacher and say, Judge not the ECB, judge. Because the correct street preacher is not judging. He's preaching the Bible. I'll tell you, you're going to hell. When I tell you, you need to repent. I ain't judging. I'm saying, this is the way. And yet, we're not going to get into it. But Corinthians 2.15 and 6.1-3, we as Christians can judge things. If you come up to me and you got tattoos over yourself, you're half naked and disdaining, you got a joint in your hand, holding hands with somebody who, who is not your wife with children, with a beer. Living off government money. And you try, oh, I'm a Christian. It don't look like it. And you're judging me. No, I'm judging what I see with my eyes. Do you go to church? Yeah, I don't get it. You're a bunch of hypocrites. Uh, add another thing. I mean, if you keep on judging that green and that red lights are green lights, one day that judgment is going to get you. Be not deceived; God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. So first, before you go looking at your brother, hear a Jew to a Jew. You better look at yourself. Before you look at others. I mean. You can't be aboard the Titanic. And throwing someone a life ring, you're going down with the boat too. This is the blind leading the blind to a point. This is somebody getting their nose in somebody's business that don't need to be there. They need to be looking at their own business. We human beings are so quick to look at the next person, but we don't want to look at the mirror. We're afraid to look in that mirror. How wilt thou say to thy brother, con context is a Jewish person, not a Christian, that there's no death and burial and resurrection. Gee, don't go be running, oh, you see, they're calling each other brother like Paul did. There's no church. Let me pull out the moat that's in my eye. Let me pull out this big telephone pole in your eye. Meanwhile, the beam that's in my own eye. You got one of them railroad tracks in your eyeball.
You can't clean somebody else's life up if yours is dirty. Thou hypocrite. Okay, that sums up. First cast out the beam out of thy own eye. Imagine somebody going up to somebody and, and trying to tell them about their marriage, their wife, or their husband. And their marriage is on the brink or is divorced. Imagine somebody coming up to you telling, well, you know, your kids are just terrible and, I, and you got a child that's in jail. That's why you better be looking at your pastor's family. Well, you know, nobody, nobody's without sin. Everybody, yeah. Yeah. A pastor of a church can't help the church if he's got troubles at home. Troubles in his workplace. Troubles in his own life. You know what I notice? With, with preachers, the, the sins they don't preach against, or they glide it real quick by, like pride, they won't touch pride. That's their sin. But they'll tell you about everything under the sun. And they'll jam it, they'll force it, they'll pound the pulpit, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What about yours, buddy? Then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote that's in thy brother's eye. And you gotta be careful. How do you like when somebody's coming up and, and trying to show you something? You're going to show everybody else. Well, we come from a long way from judge not least you be judged. Well, I know I'm saved and going to heaven. I know before I came to this spot, I prayed up, I confessed up. My sins are in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as I'm praying right now. How are you doing, ma'am, sir? You're going to tell me how wrong I am, and you're a Christian. You know, I let my light shine. Well, when's the last time you told someone about Jesus? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, then shut up. Go, get, go take that telephone pole out of your eyeball. Your problem is not the moat that's in my eye. Your problem is, if you are saved, you know I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. If you're not saved, I am pointing out sins you know you're not supposed to be doing. You know you stand in condemnation against God. You know I got that big, powerful light bulb called Jesus. Shining on your wicked life, John chapter 3, and men hate the light and love the darkness. And judge not least you be judged, you're trying to find that light switch. Like a message I got. Men are cockroaches. Turn that light on and pew, they run. All right, here we go. Give not. Uh-oh. I think I just heard Baptist church just crumble. Give not. That which is holy unto the dog. Now, what are you going to do with a Jewish gospel? With a Jewish Messiah? 
the Jewish people, and no death and burial and resurrection. What are you going to do with that one first? How are you going to handle that one? Yet, in the law, it tells the Jew, when they brought those offerings, whatever that offering was, when they brought it to the priest and gave it to the priest, giving it to God, it was holy. So that which is holy for the Jews is every offering they brought before God brought to God correctly and he says give not that which is holy to the dogs we'll look at that in a moment neither cast your pearls lively stones that's what a pearl is it's a living organism that's a gem Before swine. So we got dogs and swine. At least they trample, step over, walk over, run over, them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Swine will devour their own piglets. Swine will eat anything. I am told. As with dogs. And the dogs we're talking about here are not little puppy dogs, cute little dogs. These are scavengers. These dogs have no home that they run free. They'll catch the rats and the mice to eat. They eat the garbage in the streets. They can't be pets of the Jewish people because anything with, with a paw, cat, and dog, they're unclean. Leviticus 11, pigs are unclean. You know, there was a time in America that on the streets of New York City, there used to be pigs running around. I believe one of those islands they have out there in, in New York... There are wild pigs running around. There are scavenger dogs in cities that run around. What you have for God, you don't give to the unclean. Now, we'll deal on this more. Second Peter. This you got, I mean, scripture with scripture, you know, check it out. You'll be in doubt. Chapter 2, verse 1. But there were faults of prophets... Also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresy, Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, Catholics, Muslims, Yoga, New Age, Christmas, Esther, Christmas, Ouija boards, Seances, fortune tellers, and if you have plenty of children, you're going to populate outer space. Jesus was is not God. Lucifer and Jesus were brothers. Joined the one uh, universal church. Chop off people's heads, and you'll get virgins. Drink the Kool-Aid and you'll go off into UFOs.
We got to be, Lord, we want to thank you for being in the, your house today. We got the greatest preacher. We got the greatest church. You can't. You're not allowed to see in church age. You're, that, that's a damnable heresy. Say this prayer. Now shall be saved. Join this church. Salvation. Even denying the Lord. That's many religions there. That bought them. Bring upon themselves swift, swift destruction. See, that doesn't explain what we're, we're talking about. 22, verse 22, 2 Peter 2, 22. Got to rightly divide the word. And when you got time, read all of 2 Peter 2. But it has happened unto, the, unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog uh -oh, is turned to his own vomit again. We've been talking about false. We're not going to read the whole chapter. We're talking about false teachers, false prophets. Look at verse 19 real quick. While promising liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. You know a bunch of Americans running around saying, we got liberty, we got liberty. <laughs> Until you get arrested by the police because you didn't get the permit. We are a nation free. We are a Christian nation. Explain to me, liar, why Russia, the great atheistic, communistic nation, is going against homosexuality. And they're going to go harder. And America, the great Christian nation, will not. One nation declares atheist goes against something that is an abomination of God. A nation of Christians and they are with the abomination of God. So the dog is turned to his own vomit again. If you ever had a dog, you know a dog. He throws up and goes back and eats it again. Whatever made him sick, he goes back and eats it. That's a false teacher. He knows, he gets up there on the radio, he gets up there on the television, gets up there in the pulpit, and he keeps putting the same poison, medicine, vomit. And every time, He throws it out. The people enjoy it, eat it, devour it, and so does he. And the soul, that's the pig. The dog is turned to his vomit. The soul that is washed in her wallowing in the mire. Here is the pig. She, she is rolling in the mud. If you know television and you know Facebook and you know the radio, you know there are women out there who are preaching and teaching and they ought not to be. God calls the man the unclean dog. God, through Peter, Peter through God, calls that woman the false teacher. And she's not even supposed to be teaching. She's not even, she's not even supposed to be preaching. Calls her a pig. So come back to Matthew with Peter.
give that, give not that which is holy in there. Do not give anything holy to the false teachers, false preachers. In other words, if you want to put it in the church age, and you can, you can put, listen, judge not least, you can put that on the church age. You better be careful who you judge. You better look at your life first. All right, about this, this, this holy and swine. Put it to the church age. Put it to the Jews. If that man is a false teacher, false prophet, a false preacher, don't give him anything of the Lord. I have left churches because their word has been not the King James Bible. There have been churches before I could leave, before I found a, a, another one. I took my offerings and gave it to missionaries. I didn't give it to the church. I prayed about it. And I sought God about it. And God answered by, here's this church. I am not going to support any man. I don't care how great he is. Any man or any or any man out of the pulpit teaching heresy, teaching lies, deceiving. I'm not giving you no money in no name of God. I know a church, very sacred name, Genesis 22, Jehovah Jireh. Yeah, this program here, they gave us money so we can build a steeple and, and, and we can, you know, build the altar and pews and all that. Because, you know, a steeple is a church. No, that's not it. Go to the church building of Peter, James, and John, and Paul and tell me where the steeple is. I have on my Facebook, I have missionaries that are in third world nations. And I would laugh when I'm out of that church. I was in that church. We have to have nice fancy. You have nice fancy chairs. And you got more chairs out in a storage center in the back of the church. But you're going to have to buy pews because pews make the church. Never mind, no missionaries. And I go home and I put Facebook on. I, I, go, I, I go 12 hours of Facebook pass. And I see and I say, oh, wow. You seen those plastic chairs? People sit outside. You can't fold them. And I see this church. They got the, the, the you know the, the tin roofs and they got a tree coming through the building, a branch, mud underground, and they're sitting in these chairs. They're sitting on tree stumps. They're sitting on a, on on two cement blocks and a, and a plank. That church has more fellowship and more right with God than a fancy pew. And then there are women preachers out there. You know who they are? Women apostles. Listen, you come to me and you got apostle or whatever in your title don't befriend me on Facebook I, I, I'll block you don't come up to me you know at our church service bishop somebody's going to uh, you, you're going to be blocked if you got bishop in your name you're blocked and you got a, a woman comes up to me she's she's pastor she's elder we, we live here in Daytona Beach. We go by a church and, and, and the sign says, Reverend Cheryl. 
and Cheryl will give this. Cheryl don't know what the Bible says. Cheryl may get a letter from me one of these days and big print of my printer. Thou shalt not assert the authority over a man, Cheryl. And don't you be a man with the name Cheryl. That's not the case. Cheryl needs to shut up, get in the kitchen, take care of her family, pop a bear to get up and preach. You got these women, they're on television, they're on radio, they're in their churches, and they send their money. They send their money. And they send them. Aren't we doing great by God? God says, don't you give them your pearl. Don't you give them money. I, Jesus said, don't you. So Jesus says, don't do it. And you do it. Don't expect a reward in heaven. If they're false, if they file the scriptures, if they defile teaching the scriptures, and many damnable heresies, they violate what the Bible says. Don't support them. And don't expect God to bless you. Now, we're going to stop there, but can I show you the monkey wrench? Go to verse 1. Judge not each he be judged. <laughs> For what judgment you are judged, you shall be judged. With what measure you meet, it shall measure unto you again. And be why behold the mote that's in thy brother's eye, and consider not the beam that's in thy eye. All right, you got that? Look at verse 6. You have got to judge that man or woman if they're right in the pulpit. Don't you judge. After Jesus gave us five verses about judging, he tells us in verse 6, that man or woman, you better judge who they are. You better do right. Look at that monkey wrench. And let me tell you, the machinery is still churning. The monkey wrench broke. We live in a world today, they're getting rid of judgment. Well, guess what? You know, we got to defund the police. That red light's not really mean red for me. Okay. Don't expect any credit by God. Don't say, now you can't judge. When Jesus has said, all right, there's a man or woman, you have to look at them. You have to examine them. All right. The Jewish, now we're in the Jewish book, the Jewish Passover. I'm going to get this, this part wrong. But... You are to get your lamb. That's not wrong. I forget. It was seven days or some ten days. Some. There were a set amount of days between grabbing that lamb and killing that lamb. I forget how many days it was. You were to judge that lamb to be worthy. You were to respect that ram for any diseases, any mars, any mar anything that would invalidate that that lamb to being killed on the Passover. Well, <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> you can't say that you're not judge. <laughs> Jesus said, the law said. If you were to try somebody with murder, 
you have to have two or three witnesses. Well, in order to perform that guy to be guilty or innocent, you got to judge. Paul will tell the and like I said, we're not going to get with the Christian. We're in a Jewish book. Paul says about Christians, know ye not, ye shall judge angels. Now, can you see the angel with the nerve? You judge not, you should be judged. Get away from me, Satan. Get the whole verse. Because only, only Satan grabs one verse. That's his operation. He takes one verse out of context. You know so he quotes a verse and it's out of context? Eh. You can judge them as, as an ambassador of Satan. I don't know, they may be saved. But you can't judge the salvation, but they're taking Satan's side. Listen, you want to get married? You find somebody? You better judge that person properly. Don't come back 25 years later. Oh, I don't want to marry them. You know, you, uh, and then make excuses. 